everyone and uh, welcome to another News Coulomb video. Uh, you know, I'm going to try to film this uh, just all in first person. Uh, I found that if I do like separate recordings and B-roll, there's just a lot of editing and uh, post-production that goes into it. So let me know what you think of this video style. Uh, one of the reasons I do it is, you know, you might even be able to hear it right now. Um, we have 20, 30 mile an hour winds easily gusting more than that. And uh, so audio is sometimes hard to do cleanly where I am, which is why I record off and then do B-roll. But anyway, uh, I'll, I'm going to try this out because this should make post-production a little bit faster, a little bit easier. Uh, and then I can kind of talk about subjects and topics in real time. Uh, and just kind of show you what I'm talking about. So here, are, these are the, the 280 amp hour uh, lithium ion phosphate cells uh, inside the uh, Ford, uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, lead acid Ford battery case. And what I'm doing here is I'm really just uh, attempting to do battery cell fitment. Now, in order to get the battery up to the voltage I need with lithium iron phosphate, I have to have at least a hundred cells. I, I could technically run it off of 96, but I would always be short voltage. Um, and you can go up to 104 cells in series um, with this uh, LFP chemistry, uh, and it would work perfectly fine with the uh, Ford Ranger Electric uh, up to that nominal 320 to 330 volts. So I kind of wanted to walk through what my intent was when I was fitting these cells. Now, one thing to note too, this is only 96 cells. So uh, I'm actually going to need to fit at least three more cells in here to complete the pack. And I, I think I am fine running this as a 100S uh, battery. Uh, but as you can see in this uh, front compartment, you know, for the most part, the space is actually maximized. Um, you know, you can put these cells basically where they are um, and, and fitting 10 in this upper front area. Uh, then this uh, next uh, sort of middle section here, I, I, there's varying amounts. I have uh, 10 in here as well, I guess technically 12. In theory, I should be able to fit 14 of these cells, I believe it is, with the, the space, the area footprint. So I'm not 100% done necessarily uh, with trying to fit these. And especially here, this channel in between uh, isn't really designed as a, uh, an area for the cells to fit. Uh, this is actually sort of a channel where the fan would go. And so there's really not a whole lot of clearance at all with this upper area and so you're not even able to close uh, this battery area with these cells sitting vertically. These cells are about eight and a half to nine inches tall uh, so that actually doesn't fit within here especially if I'm going to need to put uh, studs on here along with the, the lock washers and things like that the BMS uh, voltage leads uh, for the sense cables uh, all of that, the terminals, everything is going to be very difficult to fit here. So I might have a way to fit these that they'll fit in the channel. This will still close uh, flush and then um, maybe fit two to four more batteries in here. So like I said, I'm right now I'm already three short. So I'm going to need to fit at least uh, two to three more. And I think I can fit maybe two here. And then this is kind of a bummer and I don't know if you know this the the case is not symmetrical side by side you'll notice this dip is further up than that dip but this one seems a little bit shorter so i'm a little bit bummed out by that gap because that is something that i think i'm going to need to fill in order to get a hundred cells in here cleanly um, but then the other thing is to a couple couple other things to note you'll notice there's a gap in here now part of the reason for that is um, this lip, uh, if you if you look right here, like these lips here, uh, it's very short and it's very steep, right? But but this this lip right here, you'll need to uh, add a little bit of clearance to actually get these these batteries, you know, in a little bit so the lid will actually seal shut. Now, 
one of the other things though and th this gap is on on both sides but you'll notice I actually was able to fit quite a few in here and uh, it looks like a mud dauber already got in here so I'm gonna have to clear that out um, but you'll notice one of the things I wanted to talk about too in, in addition to uh, this uh, sort of battery cell fitment I actually need to figure out how I'm going to uh, align the polarity because these cells have to be basically it's just uh, all in series there's only going to be there's not going to be two cells in parallel it's all in series so I need to figure out how I'm going to link all of these cells together so it has to be organized in this way and something that's sort of ironic is um, if I'm going to try to keep as many standard uh, bus bars, uh, the standard length bus bars as possible, uh, you know, I have to go from here to here, from here to here, right? You can't, you can't uh, go from here to here. That would take, require a different length bus bar. And so I'm going to try to keep as many standard bus bars as possible, or at least standard length bus bars as possible, because that's the shortest length in doing this but what's ironic is if you're stacking these in a sort of uh, perpendicular to the back of the case or I guess parallel with the length of the case you actually need an even number of cell stacks because what happens is this is number one positive lead this is going to go into the connector box um, and from here from you go from I guess we call it N1 to uh, P2 and then from P, you know, N2 to P3. But what's interesting is you need an even number across so that you can have an odd number going down because this is going to be, I guess, let's just say N100, right? It's going to be the final negative that, that feeds into the, uh, into the connector box. So what happens is if I do three across I can do just to map it out one here one here then a non-standard to cross and then one here to one here one here to one here and then a non-standard to cross so basically I'll only need one non-standard bus bar for every three cells going out and when it comes back in again the same rule is going to apply where I have an odd number so it's five so the, the feed comes in and then negative to positive negative to positive negative to positive negative to positive non-standard bus bar and then back across so uh, doing this in the sort of uh, even across but the negative polarity so that's that's kind of my plan for now this is sort of the fitment um, I'm actually having to pull these cells out anyway pg and is shutting off our power for like several several days most of these are charged up um, high enough and I actually am putting uh, just a, I guess a a 4 4s2p system in the house just to keep everything inside running off of a 12 volt uh, inverter uh, but I, I can demonstrate what I think is going to be my solution for this section before I like I said pull out eight of these battery cells um, just to use them while I'm not using them for the car um, but if I stack them this way it'll give me the option of going at least too high and I want to be very gentle these are extremely heavy cells so I can go too high it gives me this this clearance right and uh, so this lid will still shut and I have wiring I could put a fan in here all of that and then of course it more importantly it gives me this clearance here where these cells can now fit in like they were intended to so uh, yeah, or like <laughs> like I intended them to anyway. So I should be able to fit at least three cells across here, at least two here, and then of course the, the difference is in theory, I might even be able to go 
3 high if I stack this. And then this is essentially giving me, like I said, I was only 3 short as it is. This is giving me easily enough to fit 3 more cells in. Um, now, I might try to fit something in here, but the truth of the matter is just this, this much of a gap here, I don't know if there's clearance, right? The, the drop off is very, very quick, very, very rapid. Um, but I don't know if, even if I have the width to do it, which uh, I might be just a little bit short. Um, I could, I can definitely do it in the center here, All right? So. Can definitely do it in the center. Um, that still might not let the case close. Maybe, maybe if those were dead center, it would work. But, but we'll have to see. So, um, I'll I'll figure this last section out. Maybe, maybe it's even possible to to squeeze them in here. We'll we'll see. Especially if I have to account for that gap, and it's consistent in the NIM pack as well. So yeah, this is sort of the fitment. Like I said, right now, I think I'm targeting uh, 100 cells this way. I don't have to try to do a double layer. Uh, I mean, I think in theory they could fit higher, uh, double stacked maybe on, at least on this front end, I could probably do it. Um, I wanna avoid that if possible. Um, and, uh, but if not, I can, I can build some sort of a, a cage to let me double stack. Um, the cells, but then uh, either way, if I can fit 104, I might do it. Um, but right now it's looking like 100, even, which gives me a nominal voltage of 320. And then just uh, you know, basically doing doing the math on that. That's uh, well, it's it's a lot of a lot of voltages. Um, I think I think it's something like. Uh, Something like 85 or 90 kilowatts, 90 kilowatt hours. I'll put that in an overlay uh, here, but so it, it should be a decent pack size. And like I said, just using the amp hours to estimate for the Ford Ranger Electric, it would be uh, about a 280 mile, um, just real world driving like you're not trying to, to be a, a, a range maniac. Um, probably 200 plus um, freeway miles, so. Um, which is, is good enough for me and pretty much exactly what I'd expect. So anyway, I'd love to hear what you think. Like I said, let me know how the audio came out too. Like I'm, I'm going to do my best to fix it in post, but, uh, and then also this video format where it's just almost purely, um, first person point of view. I think it will actually work out better for a lot of these, uh, videos where I'm restoring, uh, the Ford Ranger electrics. It'll just be easier for me to shoot, easier for me to produce, and then, um, maybe even just more interesting for everybody to actually see as I film along, um, you know, so then of course you get to, to see in the open, open air, you know, it's a dirt and grime. So I'll have to clean all of this up before I actually seal up the battery, um, the battery case, this sealant's all going to need to be replaced anyway. So. All right. Well, I'd love to hear what you think. Uh, have you built a pack like this before? Um, have you, uh, you know, what were the, what were your challenges? Um, have you rebuilt a Ford Ranger electric pack like this before? And have you used this, this much, uh, you know, voltage and capacity? So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And uh, thank you for watching.